The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. What should Georgia be ready for? For the answer to this question, I approached PMCG, supporting governments, the private sector, as well as international and civil institutions by delivering simple, comprehensive, and progressive services tailored to their needs, focusing primarily on economic development, freedom, and prosperity. Alexei Alexishvili tells me that Russia will have to bear both financial and political costs if the West stands united and imposes sanctions targeting more broadly the Russian elite. What are some of the expectations that PMCG has towards uh, uh, this uh, conflict that we are seeing uh, between Russia and Ukraine and, and Russia's predispositions to have a full-fledged war in, in Ukraine, which is still uncertain to, to this day? Still, this is unclear. What is uh, expecting to uh, to be or, or what uh, we have to expect in general. Right? So um, what we see so far is that um, on one side there are some some threat, threats coming from Russia to Ukraine, and on the other side, uh, Western countries uh, with the leadership of uh, United States, uh, uh, obviously they are uh, talking about sanctions. Uh, which is not clear what type of sanctions they might be. So, looking at our previous uh, uh, historical experience, when uh, in 2014 there was some, uh, some, and afterwards there was there were several attempts of uh, setting up mm -hmm. some sanctions. There was not uh, still uh, a so so called clear evidence that that was so so harmful for Russia that they, they decided to change their attitude on a global mm -hmm. geopolitics or global security uh, strategy, right? So this shows that we need to think about that more thoroughly. But, so that's but the, if we look case. more broadly, do you think mm -hmm. that economic sanctions in general have this capacity to make uh, for example, Russian authorities to change their behavior or their attitudes towards uh, this post-Soviet, uh, whatever they are calling uh, this part of the world. Yes, I, I think I think yes. Again, that depends on the the depth of the sanctions and uh, the volume of the sanctions. So, what we see is that you know previously um, uh, having sanctions on particular companies operating in Crimea was not enough. So in that particular case, that uh, the real influence on Russian elite, that, that not created a serious burden. problem, burden yeah. for them. So in that case, I think that uh, if, if we see and look at that from a uh, different perspective, let's say if Western countries decide that now we need to put a burden not only on the companies, but also on a, on a country itself, or if they look at the uh, transaction systems, like let's say, like in the banking transaction system called SWIFT, for example, and they they have some kind of influence on that somehow to 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 uh, use this as an instrument for for the sanctions, then definitely that will have uh, some some problems for Russia. But at the same time, we need to consider what would be the the impact of it on Western countries itself. In that particular case, we are talking about uh, Western European countries and the economies of, the, of, the, of, of these countries. So, so far, again, I mean, looking at the, the, the numbers, around 38, 40% of um, gas consumption, or gas, gas uh, uh, consumption of European countries comes from, comes on, on Russian gas, right? So, so in that particular case, we need to know how they can substitute this one. I mean, what is the alternative? What is the alternative source for that? And, uh, uh, and uh, which will be easy? And that definitely will not be easy. So that means like they will think about that uh, twice or three times than any other country mm -hmm. uh, outside of Europe, right? So in this case, uh, whether this is the United States, Canada, or Australia, or Japan, or any others. But on the other side, if you look and at... And we see that impact particularly on, on Germany, for example. Definitely, yes. On the other side, uh, if we um, 
uh, if we look at Russia's economy and the structure of Russia's economy, this is also quite interesting because how self-sustainable Russia's economy is. Mm -hmm. Because, because uh, in that case, there are some s significant sectors in Russia, uh, in Russia's economy, which is uh, more import dependent. Let's say ma ma machineries and this is chem chem chemicals and all these specific products, which is really very important for their Pro, pro, industries and production, which is also somehow related to their exports as well. And in that particular case, they cannot easily substitute these imports, which comes from European countries and United States and all other de developed countries to, to Russia. They cannot easily substitute that because that's also very interesting. Um, looking at the also like economic relationship between Russia and China, that also sees that, you know, they are very good, but at the same time, um, considering China's very pragmatic uh, strategy and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, approach towards that, they are just, you know, lo looking, that they, they are quite diversified and they are not just re really heavily linked with Russia and this is not like, you know, they, they can easily substitute. Uh, in uh, in my interview one. with Renaissance mm -hmm. um, Capital, they said that, you know, uh, Russia has um, 630 billion of, of reserves, uh, so, it is, uh, so it is well covered. What type of argument is that? It, it is well covered even for the uh, in-depth sanction. Does that make sense to you? Actually, we, we uh, yes, that, uh, that in, in general, that makes sense. But on the other side, we need to know where these uh, reserves are uh, are located, right? Mm -hmm. So we, usually the, these reserves are located in Western European countries and the United States. This is how reserves are are uh, treated. So this is like, you know, what, what, what we can say is that in this particular case, if Western countries and the partnership of Western countries decide that that the debt again of these sanctions should be quite 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 deep and that the sanctions itself mm -hmm. should be quite heavy in this case this this reserves issue is also quite important is it possible to freeze these reserves? Is it possible to somehow have some inf impact on these reserves? Sanction reserves as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, from that perspective, I think there is, a, there, is an, there, there is a very interesting issue because, I mean, on one side, they, are, they see that, okay, we have reserves and, you know, this is so good that, you know, we don't need, I mean, this is quite enough to, 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 uh, to maintain our debt uh, services mm -hmm. or whatever, but the question is where these reserves are, are located and whether there is a, a specific or um, uh, the real I influence on these reserves and can sanctions somehow impact on these reserves. This is the question, technically as well as poli po policy-wise, and then of course that will be definitely very important. Yeah. Another very interesting point was uh, um, connected with Nord Stream uh, 2 Renaissance uh, Capital's analysis is that, you know, okay, this is a big, uh, for example, financial uh, loss uh, for for Russia, uh, but uh, but that's it. I mean, uh, this is uh, everything about the future potential, mm -hmm. and it does not touch the the, the status uh, quo. Is is that an argument for you? Uh, actually, I uh, not not completely. Maybe for some extent, because. What we are, uh, I mean, looking at the current uh, current uh, uh, current uh, pipelines of Russian gas uh, supplying Europe, there is a Nord Stream one, there is a one crossing Belarus and Poland, another one uh, Ukraine, and another one is South Stream, right? So, so if there is a like global decision uh, or Western countries' decision to to stop only Nord Stream 2, and in this case, uh, that definitely will have some cost. I mean, th this is a loss for Russia, the financial as well as political one, right? Yes. Because they already spent a lot of money, and uh, you know, this is like. Uh, that, that's and a, that's, that's a, the message that Eastern European countries might loss yes. their transit potential. That's right. right. But the main goal of this particular pipeline was to substitute the Ukrainian one, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, if we can, w w I mean, looking at the, the, uh, the um, historical data of uh, uh, gas 
transited through Ukraine, that is reducing every year, which means like this Nord Stream 1 and other pipelines, they just, you know, uh, increase their capacity to reduce uh, the transit, uh, transit volume via Ukraine. So in that particular case, Nord Stream 2 would probably be something very important tool to reduce further uh, Ukrainian gas transit, which is also quite quite uh, like important part for uh, Russia Ukraine relationship because in this case uh, Russia would not would be like less dependent on Ukrainian transit and that 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 would be quite uh, important for Russia as well so so again i mean looking at this particular statement whether the, the Nord Stream 2 has significant uh, loss or cost for Russia's future economy I think that has definitely very important cost. At the same time, this is more political one, whether they are dependent on Ukrainian transit or not, and how heavily they are dependent on Ukrainian mm -hmm. transit, right? So I think here question uh, should be also whether and how Europe is ready to take this burden at the same time, mm -hmm. whether they are ready for that. Because again, I mean, we mentioned that, you know, 38% of their uh, gas consumption comes from Russia, right? So if that stops or somehow re reduced very heavily, what happens then? What should Georgia be ready for? That's also quite difficult to say, like with a full clarity or um, because uh, because what we see is that still there are a lot of uncertainties and unclarity what, what will be there what type of sanctions there will be, how, what, what, how mm -hmm. heavy these sanctions might be, um, what would be this, the form, f format of these sanctions. And, um, but, but we have to be ready for every scenario. Like, you know, um, for, for Georgia, in, the, in that case, might be many different specific stuff. Um, looking at our import-export operations with Russia, uh, so our uh, Ten percent of our import comes from Russia, and fourteen percent of our export goes to Russia. But at the same time, very interesting point is that uh, around ninety percent, ninety-four percent of um, uh, of uh, food uh, coming from Russia uh, uh, is really very important, especially in the case when when food and food 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 products in general. Uh, Wheat is one of the, the biggest one, right? So, so in that particular case, uh, uh, the point is uh, how we can adjust. I mean, what would be the, the, the policy measure or plan our, B? So yeah, what say. is the plan B in this case? I mean, if we if we join the sanctions or not join, and how heavily we can join, or how we can not how we can maneuver, let's say, and especially in the case when the all economic situation is quite heavy in, in terms of inflation that we are facing right now in terms of many different uh, difficulties that we are facing now. So again, I mean, the point is we need to consider all specific parts to make the, the particular policy decision. Where should we stand, which is in the global picture, the right side, so to say? Uh, that's definitely clear. I mean, there is no other way. Like, uh, and that decision from from my point of view, Georgia have made several times saying that, you know, the Georgia's historical place is being integrated in Europe. So this is the, we are part of European family and that's already decided. And from that perspective, Ukraine is our number one partner that's already decided. So there is no other way. There is no other alternative. To that. Thank you. The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most.